Hi, hello, namaste. Welcome back to my channel. And today in this video, I am discussing about the ICZN, that is International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. And these are the contents of today's video, and that is the introduction of ICZN, history of ICZN, principles of ICZN. Here in this principle, we will study the six main principles of ICZN: a binomial nomenclature and the rules of binomial nomenclature, advantages, conclusion, and lastly, the references. So what does this ICZN now? What does this ICZN? So the ICZN is nothing but the International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. And this ICZN is also called as ICZN Code. And the term nomenclature which comes from the Latin word that is a nomen means a name and the clature means to call. So to call by a name is called as a nomenclature in a simplest way. And the main aim of this international code of zoological nomenclature is to make a stability, universality and the uniqueness while naming the taxa. So what do you mean by the stability? The stability is nothing but if once a taxon is provided with a valid zoological name and it should not change with any time. And what do you mean by the universality? The universality is nothing but if a zoological name is given and it should be accepted worldwide. And the uniqueness. So what do you mean by this uniqueness? The name itself tells that the name of an animal taxon should be a different from the other animal taxon while naming this taxon. Okay. And this is about the introduction of the ICZN. And next we shall move on to the history of ICZN. So this ICZN rules, the international rules on zoological nomenclature was first proposed in the year 1895 in the place called as a Leiden. And in zoologist or the few geologists felt the need for standardization of the names which was given to the animals. And the first International Zoological Congress which was held at Paris and accepted the international rules which replaced all the conventional and unwritten rules. And later in 1905, the international rules on zoological nomenclature were published in three different languages that is French, German and English. In 1961, these rules were successively replaced by the first edition of the ICZN, that is International Code of Zoological Nomenclature, which was written in two languages, that is, first one is the French and the second one is the English. And the rules specified in this code are applicable to all the zoological names. And the written nomenclatural rules in zoology were compiled in various countries since the late 1830, such as Merton's Rule and Stricky Lands Codes, going back to 1843. At the first and second International Zoological Congress at Paris in 1889 and the Moscow in 1892. The zoologists saw the need to establish commonly accepted international rules for all the disciplines and countries to replace the conventions and unwritten rules that varied across disciplines, countries and the languages. And this is what about the history of this ICZN and next we shall move on to the uh, principles of ICZN. So here. We are discussing about the six main principles of ICZN and the very first one is the principle of a binomial nomenclature. So 
According to this principle, the scientific name of a species is a combination of a two names, that is, a generic name and the specific name. So, the generic name is also called as a genus and the specific name is also called as a species. So, the well-known example of this binomial nomenclature is the Homo sapiens. Here you can see that the name of the species is composed of a genus and the species. So, the well-known example is the Homo sapiens. The Homo means here, the Homo means it's a genus name and the sapiens is a species name. Okay, and this is what about the principle of binomial nomenclature. So, this binomial nomenclature, importantly, it is a combination of a two names that is genus and the species. Okay, and this is about the principle of binomial nomenclature. And next, we shall move on to the next principle that is principle of priority. So, this principle of priority was first formulated in 1842. According to this principle, the correct formal scientific name is the oldest available valid name. So, for example, in 1815, the scientist called as George Yard named a species of pronghorn as an Antilocapra americana. So, in next, in 1855, the scientist called as John Edward Gray published the same species of the prong horn as an Antilocapra antiflexa. So, the name Antilocapra americana which takes the priority, the first priority because it was published in 1815 and thus Antilocapra antiflexa was published later in 1855. So, this the Antilocapra americana which takes the first priority because it was published first. And this does not take any priority in this rule because it was published later in 1855. Okay, this is what about the principle of priority says. And the next is the principle of coordination. So, here according to this principle, when a zoological name is published, it will automatically establishes in all the corresponding names in a relevant ranks. For example, publishing a species name in a binomial nomenclature that is Homo sapiens. Okay. And it also established in the subspecies name in the trinomial nomenclature also. So what does mean by this trinomial nomenclature? The trinomial nomenclature is nothing but which includes a genus, species and also the subspecies name. Okay. And whereas binomial nomenclature includes a genus and the species name. Whereas trinomial nomenclature includes a genus, species and also the subspecies name. Okay. And this trinomial nomenclature was introduced by Huxel and Stricky Land. So the example for this trinomial nomenclature is the Homo sapiens sapiens. Okay. And uh, one thing I forgot it. And uh, the another example for this binomial nomenclature is Mangifera indica. As you know, the Mangifera is a which of the genus name and indica is a species name. Okay. And so the next, the fourth rule is the which is of the principle of the first revisor. So this principle is applied in case of conflicts arises between two simultaneously published or divergent names. The first subsequent author can decide which name has a precedence. So it was first published name takes a first precedence here. And this principle deals with the situations that cannot be resolved by the principle of priority. And when the two or more different names from the same taxon. And the example is in 19, 
sorry in 1758 the linnaeus established a strix scandiaca and strix noctova a two different species of aves that is birds of both the taxa later turned out a same species called as a snow owl Later in 1931 the Lonberg acted as a first revisor and selected the Strix scandiaca to have a precedence okay and this is what about the principle of first revisor says and so the next is the principle of homonym so before entering to the which of the principle of homonymy so what does mean by this homonymy here what does mean by this homonym homonym is nothing but two or more different animal species are provided with a same zoological name or called as homonyms so according to this principle the name of each taxon must be unique and must not be replicate or duplicate of other family group or species okay for example so in 1773 a durbe established a cerambex megalitus for a species from the jamaica okay but as in 1775 this fibulin established a same species cerambex megalitus from a different place called as switzerland okay this durbe established the cerambex megalitus from the jamaica whereas fibulin established the cerambex megalitus a same species from a different place called as switzerland so the principle of priority applies here and the durbe names gets a first precedence and the fibulin's names here begins homonym okay and so this what about the principle of homonym and next we shall move on to the which is of the next principle that is the principle of the typification according to this principle each tax normal taxon in the family group a genus group or a species group must have a prefixed name bearing type this helps in determining what name it applies to so any family group name must have a genus type and any genus group name must have a species type and any species group name can have one or more type specimens which are usually deposited in the museum collection okay and this is what about the principle of typification says and next we shall move on to the binomial nomenclature and i already told that so according to this principle the scientific name the scientific name of the species is a combination of two names that is the genus and the species okay and these are the some important rules of binomial nomenclature so the name of the organism should be composed with a latin or a greek word and here the genus name contains a noun and the which is of the specific name or the species name consist of an adjective and the generic name should begin with a capital letter this generic name should always begin with a capital letter while the specific or the species name can begin with with a small letter and this scientific name must be underlined if it is handwritten and it must be printed while printing it in italics okay and the generic as well as a scientific name does not generally have a less than the generic as well as the scientific name does not generally have a less than 3 and more than 13 letters okay and this is what about the binomial nomenclature and the next is the advantages of the binomial nomenclature so it makes a simple 
meaningful and standard and it avoids a confusion and uncertainty and it is easy to understand and to remember and it also helps to understand the relationship between the species subspecies and the classes superclasses etc okay and I like to tell some recommendations of this ICZN. If you want, you can include or otherwise you can leave it. Okay. Uh, so the first recommendation of ICZN is to ensure that no two different species shall have the same name. And the second one is the ensure that one valid name will be permanently applied to the same species as some debatable debatable and uncertain points are the rules to be suspended in a given case or considered and decided by an international commission on zoological nomenclature the system of nomenclature is adapted in the binomial system to indicate the specific name and the next one is the scientific names of animals and the plant must be different and the fifth point is the generic or a specific name first published in the only one recognized on all duplicate names or synonyms here and the sixth point is a name may be based on any part of an animal or a plant or any stage of an organism of a life history okay and these are the which of the some recommendations and if you want you can include in this topic otherwise you can leave it okay and i conclude my seminar with these are the universally accepted and no two species have the same name here and this iczn rules helps to classify the name of the different animals and these are my references thank you thank you for watching my channel